Okay, I'm back. I am Carrie Little, the broker owner of Caremark Realty Group in Illinois. And I'm also the blogger of smartgirlmedia.com. And I go live on Instagram every Friday around 9 a.m. Central. And I say around because I'm usually coming in hot because I haven't made my coffee or something like that. Or maybe my age, I got to go use the bathroom. I know you're like TMI. TMI. Okay. So here we go. So let me let me start with this. So I've been doing, I'm doing a series on what it was like when I got into real estate. So my first episode was why I got my real estate license. My second was taking the real estate course. And then today I'm going to talk to you about like what it was like in my first day. And then next week I'll talk about that whole first year. And then I'll talk about what it was like working with little people at home and maybe a husband, all that great stuff. So I said it was, there was going to be a TMI last week, but here's the TMI. So I went and I signed up to take the, the exam. And when I went to sign up to take the exam, I'm trying to think, I think I went to the H&R Block in Naperville and I was sick to my stomach, like literally. When we would go take the exam and it might be pretty similar. They might fingerprint you now. I don't, I don't think we got fingerprinted back then. Um, so, and I'm a twin that could, Never mind. You, I think you get you, you get where I could have been going. So I went to take the exam and I was like sick to my stomach because I'm not a good test taker. And so first thing I did is I, I went in because they allowed you to take a pen. Back then we had flip phones, so this didn't matter. And then they gave me like two sheets of paper. And I'll tell you, as soon as I sat down at the computer, because you had to take your photo, then um, I was like, oh, they said you can go to the bathroom. I think I had three and a half hours. I sat down and I was like, man, my stomach was, I was like sick to my stomach. So TMI. So for those of you that are like me, I think you got it. I think you got it. I think you're like, you know what? I get it. I literally went to the bathroom, prayed. I'm like, Lord, help me calm down. Help me remember everything that I studied. Bring everything back to my remembrance. Help me focus and pick the right answer. The right answer, not the best answer, the right answer. So here we go. I got my water. Let's do this. So I sat down, I took the exam and she went to the back of the room and she came back one sheet of paper. I passed. I know I had multiple sheets of paper. I think that you got multiple sheets of paper back then. If you passed, I passed first time. Then I had, so when I took the course, I took it with people that I got to know and it was over three months. So I got to know these people. And I remember, I think his name was Bob. I can't think of Bob's last name at the moment. He interviewed at Baird and Warner. I think he might have interviewed a Coal Banker Century 21 a few places. And back then we didn't have 100% companies. There was Remax, there was Realty Executives, but a lot of bigger brokerages in, in the world of real estate. And I'll tell you, um, when I started, I had called all of the brokerages, but only one interviewed me. Only one. And it was the brokerage that my grandma said, you should go to work for Baird and Warner. Why? because Baird and Warner was like the, the luxury of real estate. And I was like, okay. Now my mother was like, go work in Naperville. I keep like flushing out here. I'm like, no, I don't live near there. I live near Wheaton. So I went to the Wheaton office at the time. So when I went to the Wheaton office, I interviewed with Cindy Oliver, loved Cindy Oliver. Like she made real estate fun and she had some great stories. And sometimes you need the great stories when you get into real estate. You want to see that? And so when I sat with her, she went over the process. She told me what it was going to be like, kind of. And then she told me how much money I needed. And I was like, whoo. And so in, I just want to look up the fees for our area. And if you signed up today, it's like $1,097.25. Plus I had to pay the Baird Warner key fee. Now it's monthly. I'm pretty sure they allow you to pay it up front if you want. But so I had to pay, I might've been like 450 July 1st of 2001. So that's when I that's when everything happened. You had to fill out a 45-day permit. I had to fill out the paperwork at Baird and Warner. I had to turn, show, prove that I had passed the exam, my transcript. I had to take all of this over to the local association, which also happened to be at the time in Wheaton, which is kind of nice. So I walked in and I, and, and by the way, I'm just telling you my story. I called my mom so she could help me pay the fees. Listen, I didn't know. I thought I was getting a job. When you became a re when you become a real estate agent or a realtor, if you don't go work for a company that gives you a check, 
because there are jobs out there that you can have where you're not on commission. I had, I didn't know. So to this day, I'm sure my mom's kind of glad I don't ask her for money, but whenever she does come in town, she likes to pay for everything. We try. So anyway, um, so I went to the local association. I sat with somebody. The person I do remember is Regina. Love Regina because today, because of Regina, I'm an instructor. She's one of the reasons, her and Marky. So, um, and Midwest Real Estate Data. Shout out to all of them. So I went to the association. I paid my fees. They gave me a folder. And I'm sure I still have this folder in my basement. Baird Warner gave me a three ring binder and uh, it was RWSSC, the real estate association with South Southwest, something like that. They gave me a folder. And all I can remember was the login and password to the association website and the login and password to the MLS. That's all I cared about. And I had to sign up for a two-day class, part one and part two. And it was all with Lynn Madison in Wheaton. And she's still one of the best instructors out there, right? So that's really what I remember um, when, so when I started. So like that first day to me, I, I'm, I, I can literally remember walking in and all I cared about was I needed access to the MLS. And let me tell you, let me just go back a little bit. When I got licensed or before, I did what a lot of people don't do is I literally called my friends and I was like, look, I'm getting my real estate license. If you're thinking about buying or selling, don't do anything until I get my license so you can work with me. Literally, there were people at my church that never worked with me, but then they worked with someone else. And then I shouldn't even tell all of these stories, but some people lost their houses because someone was teaching them how to flip. And it was in the at the top of the market. And at least I knew enough data that I'm like, don't buy that house. But anyway, I couldn't tell them that because they weren't my client. So I, let me just step back. So I had friend, cousin, um, let me help them sell their houses right out the gate. Like my, so like when the, when I say my first day, I had my first listing, it was about seven days in. And then I closed it like a little bit after July, um, it was August of 2001 because I had to go back and look at the data because I was like, yeah, by July 31st, I had a paycheck. It was really 30 days, about 30 days. So it wasn't right away, but it was like 30 days. I had my first paycheck. Listen, my first house, I had no clue what I was doing, but it went like this. So there's something about going to the office or showing up to training, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's in the metaverse, whether it's in the office, show up to learn. So, and the cool thing was, is everybody was willing to help me. So they were like, you need this packet. So back in the day, we'd go grab the packet. Now in my office, it's all on workplace. And you still need to watch some videos. You still need to show up to office hours. You still need to show up to class. But I grabbed this packet. It was shrink wrapped. They were like, Carrie, you need to do a market analysis. Carrie, you need all this paperwork filled out when you take it. And I was like, here, Barbara, fill this out when I got to her house. Then they said, once you fill it out, you're going to put in the MLS, which was DOS at the time, right? I put everything in the MLS, she, uh, when I said, Barbara, fill this out, like I literally, I had no idea what I was filling out. I went, we did everything correctly. Then they're like, Carrie, once you go on the market, you're going to do this thing called a broker tour. You're going to do an open house. I'm like, what? We're going to do a broker tour. Yes. You're going to have Krispy Kreme donuts at this broker tour. I did all of that. And the property sold fast. I, I mean, it was on Elm street in Wheaton, Illinois. I'm like, oh man, this is the best job ever. But let me tell you what I did that most people don't do. I called all my friends and family and I told them, I'm a real estate agent. You got to get into this business. I mean, you, if you want to, if you're going to buy or sell, let me help you. And they were willing to trust me. But what I did, what, let me tell you what I did well, is I asked a lot of questions I wasn't afraid to ask and I showed up for training. What happens a lot of times as agents is we don't show up to training until we need it. And then, because I even tell my agents, if you show up to training, the, or if you call me the day you need me, I could be sick. Hopefully I'm not. I could, it could be Easter. Today might be Easter. And I'm recording this video. Like if you wait to the last minute to learn, especially if you're part-time, some of the time, full-time job, dual career, and you're doing real estate, it's going to be hard for you. So you have to figure out when you're going to learn and when you're going to show up. So again, for me, it was a whole lot different. And I want to tell all of you, when you first get your license, don't just think it's going to be easy. You're going to get access to the MLS, but then you got to learn how to use the MLS. Then you have to take the code of ethics if you're a realtor within so many days after you get licensed. Your office is going to have training. And 
biggest tip, don't wait to learn the day you need it. Go practice writing a listing agreement. Go practice writing a contract. Go practice showing houses. In this market, I'd say vacant. Go look at new construction. I First of all, I could sell new construction because I had worked there for a few years. So there you go. Sometimes you got to get out here and play in the sandbox. Now, we all watch HGTV, love HGTV, or we watch the reality shows when it comes to real estate. But the truth is, you don't really get it until you get into it. So there you go. So thanks for joining me. Um, you can do this business. You just got to show up to learn. So I'm Carrie Little. Take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel and invest in one of my courses. And don't forget, you can join me live on, join me live on Fridays on Instagram.